Well, we're back out on Mark's boat. I've got a bit of sun in my eye. <laughs> basically today, we don't know what we're going to be doing. We're going to do a mixture of everything. This is basically part of boat fishing, so I thought I'd bring the cameras along and video it. This sort of thing, I wouldn't normally video, to be honest. We'd go out, we'd try things, see if it works, then we'd bring the cameras along after. But I said to Mark today, we'll get the cameras rolling, we'll see what happens. Right now, I've got down like a two-hook flapper rig, which I call my bream rig, and I've got some cockle baits on. I think Mark's got a bit of squid and cockle on his. See so if we can pick up a few bream in this spot, where we are. Don't know what's going to happen, we haven't got a clue, but we'll fish away. If anything happens, we'll get the camera on in between. Well, I've just pulled up the first fish just now, we had a pollock. So, I thought I'd get the camera on for this drop down. I've just hit bottom now. Oh, I've got the row now. <clears throat> Basically, what we're waiting for, I'm fishing on the bottom. I've got cockle on. It's really small hooks. I'm just waiting for the rod, rattly bite sort of thing. And you want to hit them pretty quick, you're drifting. If you're getting something playing with it that won't actually take it, let a bit of line out, just a little bit. Yeah, occasionally you'll see me pull on it, like that. It's not a fish, it's just getting stuck. And if you leave it for a few more seconds, your body won't get it out. It drags itself into a snag. As you can see, I left that one a bit too long. That's not going to come out, is it? You can feel that dropping up and down, isn't it? That's, that's not coming out, is it? I am definitely not breaking this rod. Completely lost that rig, as you can see. Not what you want, but... As you've seen in some of my videos, I yank and yank and yank and snap my rods. I'd rather break a few pennies of a rig than a rod. <laughs> I'll get this tackle back up. But well, basically what we're doing now, we've gone back up for another drift. We've decided we're going to get try and get a load of pollock and we're going to use them for bait. We're going to head out to a spot we fished last year. We managed um, to have spur dogs and taupe and stuff there last year. So that's going to be our plan. So hopefully we'll feather up a few pollock now. Maybe some coalies, stuff like that. Fresh bait basically. Mark's behind me doing the same. On there. That sort of size pollock we're looking for. Ideal predator, you know, deep water predator bait, big nests, bird dogs, top. We even got some come along today as well, like down in the tide and might put a shark rod out. Just never know. Yeah. Let's get a few more. Nice to think we could hit some mackerel on the way out, but well, bring up a pollock now for the bills of it. It makes perfect bait these ones. It's actually a little holy, the pole fish. That's actually the perfect bait size for the brilliant bait. People get mixed up with colies and pollock quite often. They look very similar. But that's a coley there. It's different to the coley, you've got a dead straight lateral line down there, as you can see. Pollock don't have it like that. These look a bit darker, but they are very similar. People who don't see them often do get them mixed up. Well, we're at anchor now. Um, we've just literally been fishing 15, 20 minutes, that's all. I've got a bite on that rod, which is on a bit of mackerel. That's set up for taupe, that is. I'm hoping for some taupe. This one, I've got baited feathers on. I've just brought up a little baby huss. It looked like it's this year's huss, it was tiny. You can see I've got bites on it as we're talking now. So, getting this back down, and I'm going to hit this, see what's there. Could just be a dogfish, but... I don't know. We've also got the chum bags out as well. Yeah, there's something there thumping on it. You can, I can feel it and you can see it probably on the camera. Hopefully it'd be a spoon dog. Nothing there. Oh no, there is. Doesn't feel like a dog. It feels more like a huss with a weight, but we'll see. It's not thumping. If it was a spur, you'd expect to have a bit of thumping there, wouldn't you? Could be just a dog though. It don't feel so heavy now. It's 
to Huss. Little Huss. Little one. Might come off. Try and get it on camera for you if it don't come off. Very strong these are as well for little things. There we go, hooks out. It's not going to relax this one, you can just tell. You Sometimes you get them and they just squirm like this. But yeah, it's just a little huss. But, first fish of the session. Here we go, look at that. Look at that. I'll put him down, see if I stop him squirming. Get a picture for Instagram. I'm going to hit this one. something on that one as well now. This one is only a 12 pound class rod, so it hoops over just with dogfish. <laughs> it went light for me, now it's going heavy again. It's weird. Now it's gone really heavy again. Might be another huss, maybe, I don't know. On the baited feathers, I'm using cockle, squid, and also a little bit of mackerel. There's a little whiting on it, and a dogfish, that's what felt weird. There's the whiting, little tiny thing. It's interesting fishing with the smaller baits on the feathers because you pull up all sorts, like that. I know it's not exciting to catch, but it's just nice to see different stuff coming up. There you go. There we go, look, nice little doggy. I wouldn't say nice, but male dogfish that is. You can see his claspers there, look, sticking up. There's two of them. But yeah, little doggy. Let's get some fresh baits on and get back down fishing. Got a take on this rod on a live mackerel. It's literally just gone down. I'm going to see if there's anything there. Let go. Yeah? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's going to go back there. Sorry, man. It's on. <laughs> what do you say it is? I don't know, pal. It's hard to say in the depth, isn't it? Yeah. Whatever it was, let go. I left it hanging there and retrieved slowly, and it's grabbed it again. I'd like to think it's a tote, but it just feels heavy. No, it could be a huss. That bait's literally been down there three minutes. I do really want to stand there, so you've got a better view on the camera, but that rod's in the way. I like that leader knot. Too big. It's a big husk, pal. Yeah. Looks like a decent sized husk. If it stays on, I'll show it you. But it's probably going to come off. Good thing is, it's still got your bait. It? Yeah, it's come off. Every time. Yeah, it's come off. I don't know if you can see it out there, just under the surface. It's coming up now. It's a nice sized husk. It's quite common that they come off, they let go. You wanted that bait, though. Oh, yeah. What I'm going to do is show you how to hook a live bait. This mackerel is still partly live. What you want to do is come through. Yours is going now. Come through the top lip, but don't go back as far as the eyes. Come just before the eyes. You can probably hear marks right in the background. Just in front of the eyes there, like that. That's still alive. Kick in and ready to go down. Taupe. Try to tangle with you, pal. Yeah, it's a big hustle bear, like hard as that. Mom was the same. That's a taupe. 
Just don't do that. It's a taupe. It looks like it seems like it's going to be a taupe. Hey, there's no way you can get it over that side though, is there? <laughs> I need to get rid of this line. Drop this down now, and I'll get that one out of the way for you. Yeah, you're entangled around me. I'll try and get rid of this. It's the mono one. I'll go slow. You're off me. It's fine. Okay, I'm going to cut it so you don't lose. You will, you'll snap your braid, pal. But I don't care about the mono line. I don't want you losing the fish. Hey, listen to that go. <laughs> Should have the ratchet on if you can. So they can hear it. Now you've yeah. loosened that. It's flying. Going now. Yeah, that's what you want. That's what it's about. <laughs> Wicked foul. <laughs> yeah, taupe on. I need to do I need to get the other camera set up, try and get shots of it in the water, pal. Any? If I've got time. Yeah, that's so why we don't get this camera on it. There he goes. Nice there. Nice size tote, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's not a bad one. Typical male fish. Twisted up, look. Like. Yeah, it's wrapping. We unwrap it, isn't it? There he goes. <laughs> it's wicked, isn't it? It is. Uh... Right. Let's get this set up. Try and get underwater shot. As you can see, look, nice top there, Mark just had. Try and get that way to touch, maybe because of the lens. Give look at that. Give a good scrap in the deep water. Look at that mouth in there. It's insane. Well, just getting a bite on this rod. That's with the live mackerel you see me put out just now. Fingers crossed, it's a tope. Still something there playing with it. Well done, it's slackened it off. Listen to the ratchet now. You want to hear it scream off. When a toad screams off, you don't want to strike. We're using circle hooks. So what we're going to do, bring the lever drag up to strike position. You've got a bite. If this was a tope, it would have screamed off by now, I reckon. I'll hit it and see what's there. So, take the ratchet off, bring it up to strike position, and just wind into it. That's what you need to do. Don't try and strike to set the hook. The hook set the cells in circles. If you strike, there's a very good chance you're pulling the hook out of its mouth. People say, oh, I'll get loads of drop runs with taupe. It's because they're striking like crazy at them. This, this potentially could be a taupe, I don't know yet, but it didn't run off, but Mark's didn't, to be fair. It's quite deep water, so they react different. At the minute, it's doing not a lot of anything. Usually you get a lot of head shaking and banging, but there's still time yet. I do think it's a hush, to be honest, at the moment. Is that 
little hus. Yeah, it's a little hus. There's a chance it'll come off, which is very common with these. They literally grip the bait and hold it, and they don't get hooked. It's very rare you actually hook them properly, very rare. And as I say that, this one's hooked properly. <laughs> What I'm going to do here, the hook and the lead over the side out of the way. Always be safe. I will try and show you this hut on the camera, but they're not very camera friendly. Well, it's not too bad. If you if you hold it tight, look, it locks up. Relax your hands. You don't need to hold it to hold it tight. I've relaxed my hands. Look, the hut is relaxed. Look at that. Perfect. You can see my hand here. If I grip it, it'll tighten up. So don't grip them. That is a male huss, and there's his little mush look. Shark family they are. Mark's got a little one coming in now, exactly the same. But yeah, get it returned. For a huss. <laughs> Aggressive bites, aren't they? Yeah. Looks like another huss on the way up. This bait has literally just gone down again. Hey. This was a big fresh pollock head, this was. Could be, it's thumping. It's not thumping now though. Yeah, really. They are. It's very similar. Now oh, look. That's not a huss. Second line. What is it then? Second line. I'm on full. I'm nearly on full. It's not fighting like a taupe. It's not fighting like a taupe. Was it a really big? I don't know, pal. It's weird. Don't feel like a taupe. It could be a taupe. Just not woke up yet. Yeah. It's coming up in the water. Look. It feels a bit taupey, but it hasn't got the power behind it. Huh? Might be, pal. Whatever it is, I hope it stays on so we can see what it was. Honey? Or is it something tangled up? It's acting weird, pal. Look in the background. It's a spur, isn't it? Is it? Is it a spur? What the hell is it doing? I don't know if it is a hush, you know. Oh, what the hell is it? I've never had hush. It's a big hush, isn't it? Yeah. That's why. There's something below it, look. Yeah. Another one. I think so, yeah. There's a hush below it. Yeah, there is. Get to the camera, pal. It's gone back down. Hush following a hush up. It'll probably both squabbling over the basin. Yeah. That is a big hush. Yeah. That was like the ones the other day in Everair on that is. Hopefully it don't come off. We're nice to get a bigger one on the camera, won't you? A proper one. Oh, it come off. Why do they always come off? It's a really big one as well. Oh, yeah. That one come off as well. <laughs> like I was saying before, with us, it is really common. It's very rare you get, get them in the boat. Not ones like that. I'll put that bait back down. It had another hus below it, following it up. I've never seen that with hus before myself. I've seen it with, I've seen it with spurs. I've seen it with all sorts of fish, but never a hus. But anyway, we'll get this back to the bottom. Fingers crossed. We we'll get a taupe or something. Well, this is typical of the sort of hus you can expect to find offshore in Cardigan Bay. This one's about fourteen pound. There's no shortage of them out here. You get some fresh bait, live bait, white in, pout in, poor cod, anything, and you'll get plenty of these on the top grounds. As you can see, we're a bit spoilt from here, really. We get loads of them, but uh, yeah, nice colours on them. It's Big, grouchy looking fins. <laughs> Let's get this one back. 
well, just had another huss. What we're going to do, we're going to head off somewhere else. We're going to anchor a wreck, I think, so we can get off, off the wreck. But yeah, have a look at that. Another nice size huss. They're not a bad stamp, really. This is the average sort of size, I'd say. I'm guessing this one will be seven, eight pound, maybe. Not weighty, there's no point. We're just going to get it chucked back. But yeah, nice huss. We're at the wreck now. So if you can see here, yeah, we've got a baited feather rig. Um, basically, it's got five, six feathers on it, same as a normal mackerel rig. Just put little bits of cockle on. So I'm going to drop this down, hopefully pick up some pouting and stuff. Get a few few little pouting, and that'll make a wicked bait for when we go back down trying for congas and ling, stuff like that. I'm lowering down now. There's no special technique with this. It's a bit annoying because you lose a lot of gear doing this because you we're at slack water now, but the wind's pushing us over the wreck. So I'm going to drop this to the bottom, and I want to drag bottom with it. You're just waiting for a rattly bite and you hit into it. I've pulled up a few pout already, so we've got a bit of bait. But the plan is, probably after this drift, we're going to drop the anchor. I've got a bite there, look, as you can see, the rod bouncing. This is fighting quite a bit, you know, more than a pout. Yeah. Yep. We, we was hoping we could end up getting bream on this wreck at some point, but we never have. So, what we was hoping today is doing what we're doing now, we might pull out a bream. It'd be wicked if we did, but I don't know if it'll happen, to be honest. I'm guessing this will be pouting again. It was just very rattly at the start. Normally, you hook them and that's it. It's just a weight bringing it up. We're not far off now. Oh no, it's cuckoo wrasse. I've been wanting one of them. I need one for my species hunt. Look at that. <laughs> That's wicked. It's one of the things I've been saying all day I want to catch. And we've got one. Ouch. It's spiky. I'll show you this on the camera now. It's wicked. I do need one for my species hunt. But yeah, nice little cuckoo wrasse there. Look at that. Amazing colours on them. This one is actually a little bit dull compared to some. Some of that bright electric blue. Yeah, but that's absolutely brilliant. I'll get a picture of it for the species hunt. But yeah, you got little. Whatever you'll see them on the camera. A lot of little cat's teeth. There you go, look at that. You see the teeth there. I think they feed on crustaceans, crabs, that sort of thing normally. But yeah, I'll get a quick picture of this and chuck it back. Got another bite there then, look. It's tapping away. Give it a tiny bit of slack. Literally lifted into one. As I was going about to lift it up off the bottom just to check, I, I felt it hit it. Good timing that one was. <laughs> I'm guessing this will be a pout. Yeah, this one's a pout. I'm a good juggler, see? <laughs> yeah, right there, look. Perfect bait size, that is. Absolutely spot on. Let's get it in the cooler. Oh, in the water. Got it in the cooler, in the water. Get these feathers untangled and drop it back down. Well, we're on our way back up now. I'm gonna get the anchor down this time, hopefully. It's quite difficult anchoring a wreck. You need to head up quite far up tide, probably 200 meters ish, and drop it, and then let the rope out to fall back onto it. Sometimes it can take two, three attempts. Hopefully we get it in one, and we can get out the baits down there and get fishing. Fingers crossed we find some congas, maybe some ling. We don't get many in our area at all. We've had a couple of ling in the past. i we'll probably had them on the channel, to be honest, last year. But it's not like a common occurrence. You may pull out the odd little one. I think the best we've ever had is around five pound for a ling. Never ever had a conga in this bay, personally. Not off the boat anyway. You get little ones off the shore, but never on the boat. So if we could pull up a conga off a wreck, it would be wicked, it'd be great. Anyway, I'm gonna get this anchor down. If we bump into anything, which I hope we do, I'll get the camera back on. See you in a bit. I'm just dropping down the feathers, baited. Got a bit of cockle and squid on them. We've actually anchored the wreck now. I'm sitting just on it. I've got my other rod out here, over my shoulder. Um, I've got a part of a pout down on that one like a big Muppet rig, I call it a wrecking rig, uh, to like a 10-0 uh, 
uh, cock some old meat hook with a big muppet on it. While I'm waiting for anything to happen on there, I'm dropping this down just to try and catch some fresh bait. And pretty much straight away, we're getting taps and nods on this rod, so. Just thought I'd bring you back for a little bit, show you a bit of what's going on. But as you can see today, we come out not knowing what we was going to do. We never had a clue. Wasn't sure where we should go or what we should try. So we ended up fishing in shore for bait. We went out. Then we've had huss, we've had taupe, we've had a mixture of those. Some pork cod, hook gurnard, stuff like that. Come out here, we've had cuckoo, ras, pout. Hopefully, the, the rods will go off with something bigger and better. That's what this is all about. Got a bite on this rod now, the little rod. That's what it's all about, you've got to try these things. A lot of the videos you'll see on my channel and other channels is when people are out there and bagging up. We don't generally share the videos like this one where you've been all over the place trying different stuff. But I just thought it'd be a good insight for you all to see what actually goes on trying to find these spots. It's not always wicked days where you're more excited and happy and smiling. I don't think today's been a bad day, I think it's been quite good. We've had better days and we've had a lot worse as well. But it's just the way it goes. Should be pout coming up on this now. It's just like a little rattly bite, really. Nothing amazing, but it's a wicked bait, really, for the fish on the wreck. What's going to be the predator's main diet? If this is the main fish down there, a little fish. So, yeah, it's a good thing to catch and a good thing to fish with. I don't think these wrecks hold many congas and ling. If they did, more would come off them. We would have caught more because we've done this a few times. But it's always that excitement of just not knowing. We had one of these days a few weeks back, I did have the cameras with me, but I ended up not filming, but we anchored a wreck, we dropped the rods down, started getting bites, and was bringing up spur dogs, good sized ones. I did post that on Instagram, I think. Yeah, a couple of pout. These ones are a bit small, so I'll drop these ones back. But as you can see right there, look, a couple of small pout in. Try not to touch them, I'll just drop them over the side. If you're not keeping the fish, try not to handle them. They definitely go back better if you don't handle them. And to be fair, pouting are not very hardy, they don't do too well, ever. Well, that's the end of the day. Unfortunately, we never had anything off that wreck. There's loads of little pout, stuff like that. No congas, no ling, unfortunately. We'll have to try again next time, sometime, I don't know when. Anyway, that's gonna be the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.